Hello YouTube, this is a Satsi 5 and I have a knife review for you today. This is over the Great Eastern Cutlery uh, Model 46 uh, uh, Whalo. Uh, this is a uh, elephant toenail or a sunfish um, style knife, uh, which is a pattern. And um, I've been really interested in getting one of these for a while. As some of you may have noticed, I got on a traditional knife kick. And this was one of my grail knives. This was one of my grail slip joints. And uh, I've been interested in the Sunfish for um, quite a while. Uh, back in uh, probably 2009. Uh, 2008, 2009. Um, maybe a little bit before that. But... Um, at the time uh, that I was interested in uh, the um, elephant toenail knife, the only way you could get one was um, to get an uh, antique off of eBay or just any antique uh, source. And um, they cost upwards of $300. And at the time, I didn't have enough money to buy one. And um, so it got put on the back burner, and um, I kind of forgot about it. Then I learned about this company named GEC or Great Eastern Cutlery, and they made their own um, uh, elephant toenail knife. Um, they call they named it the Whale, I guess because it's a whale of a knife. Uh, it's it's definitely pretty big. It's um, uh, four and three eighths inches long, closed, uh, which is pretty big. And um, the interesting thing about GEC is they don't make a lot of knives branded by uh, GEC. They make knives branded by Unexfeld and Tidiut. Uh, these are all dead cutlery uh, cut, um, businesses from the 1920s, I believe, that just uh, got went out of business. And GEC is uh, paying homage to them and uh, branding knives under their name. So this is a Tidiut, um, a Whalel, um, autumn gold jig bone unserialized 1095 steel and once again it's four and three eighths inches closed um, like I said this is this was a grail knife for me the only way this knife could possibly be better is if it had a um, um, mammoth uh, molar or mammoth tooth uh, um, uh, covers or scales and um, maybe some engraving on the side, uh, on the bolsters. And but uh, other than that, without spending a whole lot of money, I was able to get my Grail slip joint knife. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and open this up. There's the big blade right there, and there's the um, secondary blade. Um, this knife is pretty interesting. This knife is what is known as a jumbo swell central uh, elephant toenail or sunfish because it's big and it swells up in the middle. Um, some things to take note. Uh, the pull weight, I'd say is an 8. On the uh, master blade, you really don't need to use the thumb nick if you don't want to. You can easily pinch the blade and open it. The um, secondary blade uh, needs the thumb nick, and it is to a number eight. Uh, locks up solid, absolutely no wiggle play in any direction. Has a nice uh, snap, a nice uh, talk, if you will, when it closes and when it opens. Nice walk and talk, very nice. Uh, but how practical is this knife? Well, depending on what you have going on, it could be a very practical knife. If you walk in a hardware store and you like uh, traditional knives and you're going to be cutting a lot of rope, which uh, this knife was advertised as a um, um, 18th, 19th century uh, uh, rope cutting knife used on sailing vessels. Uh, most uh, people who are into the hobby of collecting um, elephant toenails or sunfish knives don't really believe this. They, they think it was just a marketing ploy by Case and Sons. But um, 
I have no doubt that'll be an awesome rope cutting knife. As you can see, I got some rope. I'm going to open up this master blade. And we're going to cut some rope. Why? Because I can. And that was fairly easy considering I was reaching um, uh, behind the tripod. It was very easy. Um, something you might find interesting is the stepped um, grind right here. You got that step, that step, and then you got the knife. So um, uh, that actually spaces out the blade while the blade doesn't, they don't rub. There's no blade rub in between. In between. So you can squeeze these knives together, you can open it uh, very easily without rubbing the blades because of how they ground this with this step pattern. Um, let's, let's start talking about, um, well, while we're still on the subject of practicality, uh, this knife obviously has no pocket clips, so it's free-floating in your pocket, and um, I really like the modern photos because they're so simple. I enjoy these types of knives because they're very non-threatening and uh, they work. But there was a disadvantage to this knife that I learned the first day I got this knife. I put it in my pocket, the same pocket that my cell phone was in, and the, po the pocket space was used up. There was not a whole lot of space between my phone and this uh, knife. And I don't know which side it was, but it was uh, sitting up. And I reached inside, and this tang got under my uh, fingernail and uh, cut me pretty good. I think it was this one, actually. But that, this is a big, big disadvantage with this knife. And I was really disappointed. Uh, and I don't know if, the, uh, if, uh, in, if these problems could be engineered out of the knife. It might just be a flaw of this knife design. But... The tangs on both the master blade and the secondary blade are really, really sharp. Uh, you know, uh, you get this and you tap it on someone, you can probably cut them pretty bad. And in fact, I did cut myself pretty good under the fingernail when reaching in my pocket trying to uh, extract this knife. So that is something to really consider. Uh, you know, I don't, like I said, this might be just an engineering flaw in this pattern. The knives, when um, opened up, fit perfectly. Uh, and uh, so uh, it might just be how, something you have to live with if you're going to use this knife. Now, something also to uh, take into consideration is the build quality on this knife excluding these extremely sharp tangs is far better than any case uh, I've ever used. Uh, the only other case knife that I can say is on par with this knife is the gentleman's or the Swayback um, the uh, case Swayback Jack um, which is uh, extremely well finished but um, I've heard this from several people who buy GEC knives that all of their knives come with the quality that that one case knife carries. Um, everything is seamless as far as um, the fit, uh, locks up perfectly, and the spring is flush when closed and open. A lot of case knives are not uh, closed. I mean, are not smooth when closed and, well, they'll sometimes, they'll usually close, uh, smooth when they're closed, but once you open them, the spring tends to pop up a little bit and it's not flush. So, uh, that is something to keep in mind that this knife, um, has extremely well, um, uh, fit and finish. The edge is a lot better than most cases I've ever handled, um, and I haven't handled a lot of the expensive cases. The nicest case knife that I own is um, the Swayback Jack. But um, I've gotten a lot of, of the more affordable cases and the quality of the blades were just horrible. Um, the uh, shield is pinned. You can see the two dots there. 
Uh, most case knives, the shields are glued on, and I've heard a lot of complaints about heavy use of those knives that the shield would pop out. This is not going to happen with this knife. It is literally pinned into the blade, and uh, this knife isn't coming apart. This knife will last way longer than I will, uh, unless I just abuse it. If I use it like it's supposed to be used, there is um, uh, this knife is an heirloom. Now, uh, something else I'd like to point out with this, I want to call it a modified uh, uh, pin blade. But with this pin blade, you wouldn't think it would be that good of a thrusting knife. And I'm not talking about self defense. This is not a self defense knife. But um, it's surprisingly uh, a good uh, thrusting knife. So if you if you're breaking down boxes or um, that kind of stuff, and you need to get through um, the seam, you can stick this knife through a, a cardboard box and cut. So it does have that piercing capability, which I didn't think it was going to be that well when I just looked at it on the um, uh, internet. I thought, well, you know, this is going to be a very mild point, but it actually does a pretty good job. Uh, as you can probably see when the light hits it, this knife has been used. And you're probably wondering, what is that on the blade? Well, let me remind you, this is a 1095 high carbon steel blade. And uh, a lot of my um, uh, slip joint knives that I carry in view, a lot of times that uh, in the um, testing process, I'll use them as a steak knife at a restaurant. I go to a restaurant, order me a steak, cut it up with my slip joint knife. And that's exactly what I did with this knife. Uh, I ordered my steak medium rail, as in rabbit. Very bloody. Um, depending on the day, it's a little bit more rare than it is medium. But um, I like my steak red. Um, and I cut it up. And from the period that I... Um, well, that was my cat. You think that's just a good place to sit? Oh, well, he's part of the review now. But anyways, um, from the time I made my first cut until the time I was finished cleaning my plate, I wiped this off with a um, napkin, and that patina was there. I mean, it took no time at all for that patina to form. Uh, I wasn't trying to give it a patina, and, uh, and uh, it just happened. And when I first discovered I had this patina, I was a little bummed out uh, because uh, I wasn't intentionally putting it on. And, uh, and then later when I started looking at it, I noticed some of the subtle color differences and stuff, and I, and I began to appreciate it. And it gives it kind of a good two-tone look. Uh, I describe in most of my slip joint knife reviews that holding a slip joint is like shaking hands with a cat. Uh, um, it just most of them aren't that ergonomic in my opinion and people have different definitions of what's ergonomic to them and um, uh, and most slip joints don't fit what I feel is the ergonomic knife now this one doesn't feel like you're shaking hands with a cat you know it's nice and beefy it fills up the hand um, the um, secondary pin blade does stick out um, but I feel I can grab this and cut through some heavy rope, not for an extended period of time, but I can get the job done relatively easily and comfortable. Yeah, so I give it a gorilla grip. This um, a secondary pin blade will dig into my skin, but um, uh, gripping it, uh, you kind of have to hold it in your hand and grip it a couple of different ways, and you'll find a very comfortable spot, and you could actually use this knife pretty hard. The Sunfish or the elephant toe is like the hard use knife of its day. Uh, you know, they didn't really have tactical folding knives back then, but if you needed a hard use folding knife, this is what you grab. This is a good, this makes a good hunting knife, it makes a good rope cutting knife. Uh, any th hard use that, at, that was going on in that time, this knife pretty much fit the bill for that. And uh, so uh, that's what this knife was kind of used for. And like I said, you can kind of uh, put that uh, 
extended um, or the spine of the secondary blade in a certain place in your hand and it doesn't really bother you that much at least it doesn't me now if the reverse was opened the master blade tucked away and the uh, pin blade open this is extremely uncomfortable um, you don't want to be using your knife like this on a daily basis uh, you, it's just not cool uh, but I like slip, slip joint knives with two or more blades it's the old-fashioned way of dealing with edge retention you use the master blade until it gets dull and you usually sharpen it you know kind of on a day or by daily basis and if you ever cut off caught off gold you have a secondary blade to do it more to the cutting task and you usually keep this uh, razor sharp and you just don't use it unless it's an emergency um, overall I really like the slip joint knife this is not a safe queen I'm using this knife and um, so far all of the videos on this knife uh, that I've seen on uh, YouTube, there were not uh, reviews done by people who are actually using the knife. Now, I've learned quite a bit from using this knife, and uh, I'm happy with it. The only downside to this knife is the exposed tangs on either side, and they have the potential to cut, poke, and stab. So, uh, that's the only bad thing. Um... Uh, I guess that's about it. To me, this is a beautiful knife, and um, I've been really, really happy with it. It's my favorite slip joint, um, far as uh, you know, a hard use slip joint. I'm still, I'm still torn between this and the um, Swayback Jack. I don't know which one I like better, but this one's definitely uh, a good one, uh, knife. They come in a tube. Uh, this is a very sturdy tube. Uh, I could probably stand on this without it crushing. Has uh, plastic lids on both sides. The knife comes with this wax paper wrapped around it to keep it from corroding during shipping. And um, I like the tube. I like the tube better than the box. To, uh, to me, you can use this tube. You can store stuff in it. Uh, it's so hard and st stuff that nothing's going to get crushed. So if you have something that's kind of breakable, you can put it in here. If you want to uh, store your file kit in here, you can do that. Um, Tindall, uh, fi fishing stuff, and then you can use this as kind of an organizing tool in your backpack. Um, of course, it's kind of bulky, but uh, I really do like this tube, and I'm definitely going to find a use for it. Um... I guess that's it. There was Oscar the cat. Oscar. Oscar, come here. He thinks he's too cool. That's it. That's the review. I hope y'all enjoyed it. I'm a Salt Sea 5, and I'm out.